Right, welcome to this review video. It's for Phoenix Awakening, Phoenix Rising here. So it'll be a full review, specifically going to focus in on the new rules, uh, some re-sculpts as well. Very exciting releases indeed, as you are aware. I'm sure already I have a, uh, an Eldar collection. I've got Drakari as well. So uh, some amazing re-sculpts that Games Workshop have done. So very, very excited about that. And there's some new rules and so on. New powers, new uh, stratagems as well. So some fascinating uh, things to look at here in this book for sure. So a bit of full review, cover all the rules, give you the full lowdown uh, on this book here. But uh, any Eldar Drakari players and so on uh, should be very excited about this publication here. Some great powers available for sure. So I, I think what Games Workshop are doing is clever. Uh, for example, uh, if they just sculpted one of the Phoenix Lords, for example, Jane Zar, for example, and then just release that out of the blue. It wouldn't really be that popular, but they're linking it in with the storyline, and it gives them an opportunity to re-sculpt some of the older previous models, more famous models, uh, to re-sculpt them and draw them into the storyline. So uh, that helps the sales, and then it, it also results in getting some re-sculpts of some of the great and classic models, which are desperate for an overhaul. So it's a, it's a clever idea, progressing the story and then bringing in different units from different factions. And so hopefully this is gonna, this style of what Games Workshop are doing uh, will hopefully affect all the factions. You'll see some great re-sculpts taking place. And uh, it's very, very good news indeed. And I have to say, that, you know, the Eldar stuff, you always want to, you always worry because uh, I've always been very impressed by the Eldar models, even the ones that are available in, in fine casts like the old Striker Scorpions. Uh, the uh, Howling Banshees and so on, but uh, the, the new models are utterly amazing. So great job from Games Workshop for sure. So uh, thanks to Games Workshop for sending me a copy uh, ahead of time. Uh, this has been a, a bit delayed because I've been away here and just come back and this book has arrived. Uh, this, I get my Games Workshop stuff usually from GamingFigures.com so you can check them out. They're the channel sponsor. Just means you can get your 40k stuff at a discounted rate. So, here we go. It's exciting here. Eldar and Drakari are already powerful. But there's some even, even more powerful now. Interesting options and choices here. Uh, so, we'll just take you through the artwork here. It's not the biggest of books. It's not huge. But uh, I think any serious Eldar player and uh, Drakari as well and so on, uh, I'm seriously going to uh, consider getting a hold of this book. The Ancient and the New, Skin of the Stars, The Hunter Unleashed, The Fates of the Craft Worlds, Wolfway's Mercy, The Wrath of Kamora, and then Reborn. Great colour scheme, that one. Always been. I, I used to think it was not a very good colour scheme. I went to Warhammer World and saw the display that Games Workshop have there. It's still on display. It's uh, Iron and Eldar against Tyranids, I believe. It's like an, a, a lava or volcano wasteland. But the, the models paint up in that scheme just look fantastic, especially the Wraith constructs. Very, very impressive. The Harlequins, which I know a lot of people ask, I need to get on with those. I, I have the models. I have a list drawn up, a decent list proposed on the Plus channel, so it's all set up. I just need to, a bit of a psychological barrier with those <laughs> because of the, the time it's going to take to paint them. Hope and Despair, Entwine. 
Yeah, you do get missions here with this. So there's some missions to play through. So, you know, you're introduced to the storyline as it progresses and you can play out the missions as the storyline moves along as well. So you can get involved in the story also. You know, and there it is, this is the Iron Den. The Wraith Knight looks particularly cool. I just think this, the colour scheme is too basic. It's just uh, yellow and blue and there's not much to it. But you actually physically see the models. Even the photographs don't do it justice. They're just amazing presence on the battlefield. So, Theatres of War, Maiden World and High Altitude. Just some interesting games to play. And then Echoes of War, Sky Strike is the first mission. Bitter Reversal, Confrontation. So you get three main missions there. And then now Craft Worlds. Been looking through this with interest. You've got your name generator there, just for help with names. Points, values, which we'll come back to as well. There's a new psychic discipline, Runes of Fortune, is available. Uh, Aspect Warrior Exarchs can now have access to a variety of different uh, abilities for them. Usually it's just fixed, you find it in the codex, but now you've, there's a table uh, for each of the aspects and you can select one uh, or even add it on additionally to the one you already have. So uh, that's you can really sort of tailor your army and list and the theme uh, a lot now with these. Yeah, also craft world attributes will cover all of this stuff. The only caution I do have is uh, is the danger of too much extra rules and abilities starting to stack up. Uh, that's what happened in 7th edition. Uh, it's one book after the next being released and it started to stack up all these attachments and data sheets and so on and it got too much. Uh, it became a bit top heavy and I'm worried about that to some degree. For example, look at uh, look at James's Ultramarines in recent games. He'd have all the stratagems laid out from the Space Rain Codex and then a stack of stratagems from the Ultramarine supplement as well, and it's a load of cards. And so the worry is that it starts to get too much to remember and so on. Um, so just be a bit wary of that. Hope it doesn't go down that route where it starts to get just too much overloads and then sort of self-destructs uh, the edition. Hopefully not, it's been very well organized so far, each edition, but the best organized uh, of all the editions that I've played. But anyway, James Zar, I don't. I've tried Howling Banshees uh, a good number of times. And I've struggled with them, but now could be the time to experiment with these. Uh, the model, in my opinion, is utterly fantastic. It's a beautiful, beautiful model. Incredible resculpt. It's superb, and it's, it's very exciting because you then think, well, what are the other Phoenix Lords going to look like? And indeed all the other aspect warriors and so on. It's a very exciting time uh, for Elder. Elder already have some amazing, beautiful models, but now hopefully we'll start to see uh, some of the old classics given a re-sculpt. And if it's going by the standard of, of Jane Zar here, uh, it's uh, something to get excited about. Incredible. So we'll take a look at the rules. We'll just dig out the points values here as well. So uh, 115 points for James Zar, yeah, it's pretty cheap really, just over the 100 points mark, not too bad at all. Yeah. I'm just thinking of other Phoenix Source crown dress for example. Resculpt of, of him is going to be pretty impressive I would imagine. I have the older model, it's got the older James Zar model, but sort of out of, out of scale now, smaller. Uh, you can tell they are dated, heavily dated models and so uh, they are desperate for re-sculpts. It's great that Games Workshop have done this. So I think this is the, the right way. That Games Workshop have got to think of a yeah a commercial way of doing this effectively to sell the models. So bring them into the storyline I think is the best route. So it's clever stuff from Games Workshop. Uh, so power level seven, movement eight. This is very, very quick on foot here uh, for the Howling Banshees as you'll see. Weapon skill 2 plus, ballistic skill 2 plus, strength 4, toughness 4, six wounds, loads of wounds to try and get through which is great. Four attacks, uh, leadership 9, and a 2 plus save. Uh, it's armed with silent death, blade of destruction, only one per army. I think if I go for James I've got to take Howling Banshees and so therefore the plastic re-sculpts of those uh, I'll need to get a hold of as well. But uh, and, and again they look fantastic as well. Ancient Doom and battle focus, so able to advance 
add and still fire uh, assault weapons with no minus. That's all the usual rules for that. Uh, so acrobatic. This model can be chosen to charge with even if it advanced this turn. So brilliant. So it's an 8 inch move plus a minimum of 1 and up to 6. So potential 14 inch move and then able to charge on top of that. If this model advanced this turn you can choose to charge with it if it was within 15 inches of any enemy units instead of 12. And you can add 3 to the charge roll. So very very swift on foot. I'd, I'd like to play these where you catch opponents out they see an infantry unit on foot and they think, yeah, okay, maybe they're fast enough, but not realising just how fast these can move up the board. So, very, very quick. When this model fights, you can choose uh, for its attacks characteristic to be equal to the number of enemy models within two inches of it after any piling moves have been made. That is an exceptionally good rule. So, very, very useful, again, and charging into hordes. Either light infantry or because you're armed with such decent weapons here, uh, there's heavy infantry as well, especially those that don't have a decent invon save. So like a full squad of 10 Chaos Space Marines, Jane Zar would happily plunge into those and bring a lot of them down. Yeah, the Banshee Mask, no Overwatch as well, so tactically very, very useful. The no Overwatch ability is, is powerful, especially if you're trying to crack into something like a Tau Gunline for example. Uh, Cry of War. I used to run um, uh, Wave Serpent, Banshees inside, and then a character or two. We could see that make a return. Uh, Cry of War on ending. This model and friendly Howling Banshees units that are within six inches of it at the start of the fight phase always fight first in the fight phase, even if they did not charge. So again, very useful because the Warriors Banshees getting cut down before they get a chance to fight. If the enemy has units that have charged, or have a similar ability, then alternate choosing units to fight with, starting with the player whose turn is taking place. It's again, tactically very useful power. And their war shout. Resolve an attack made by a melee weapon against this model. It's minus one to the hit roll. So a little bit of protection uh, for these as well. But yeah, James are brilliant. And a, a beautiful model, beautiful focal point for your Eldar army. Yeah, leave in the comment section if you're excited about this, but uh, I just, the model looks fantastic. Really, really good. So, you know, credit where it's due. Games Workshop have done a superb job. Howling Banshees here, again in plastic, they look fantastic. <laughs> plastic, they look fantastic. <laughs> okay. Uh, Howling Banshees then, uh, we'll get points values here. I don't think they've changed in points. I could be wrong. Nine points, and you pay four points for your power sword. The pistol's free of charge, the banshee mask's free of charge as well. So uh, 13 points. A, a, a 10 man, 10 woman squad is 130 points. It's cheap, really. Uh, and then with these extra enhancements, you can make them pretty good. So it's no big deal. Unit 10 of them is wiped out and destroyed. It's not particularly a big deal. I look forward to painting these again. It's been about. Five years. Yeah, so yeah, I enjoy painting them. Howling Banshees then. Movement eight. So they'll keep up with James Army. Problem. Weapon skill, ballistic skill three, plus strength three, toughness three, one wound, two attacks, leadership eight, only a four up save though. So that's the danger that if they get hit, they can be brought down pretty quick. Then any AP minuses, they're in big trouble. The other thing about James Art, no, no invon save. So it's interesting Games Workshop have kept that up. I was thinking maybe they'll bring in some kind of invon save uh, for the Phoenix Lords. Your standard sort of Phoenix Lord, a couple of them have it. Uh, but James are nothing here. No invon save, not even a 5 plus. Some kind of parry ability, there's nothing there. Same for the Howling Banshees. Uh, so the Howling Banshee Exarch can be equipped with one of the following instead of the Power Sword, uh, the Executioner or the Triskel. Handling Banshee X, X could be equipped to mirror swords instead of one shuriken pistol and one power sword. So you can take double mirror swords or you can keep the pistol and take the Triskel or the Executioner. So, shuriken pistol, power sword, bench mask. So four points, or six points to the Triskel. So you can pay an extra two points or an extra three points. Uh, for the Executioner, and Mirror Swords is the same. 
You lose the pistol and the power sword and you get mirror sword. Four points. So we know about shrink and pistol and power sword. The trist scale then, it's a shooting weapon range 12, assault 3, strength 4, minus 2 and 1 damage. So it's not pistol, so you can't use it in combat. So I probably wouldn't bother with it. Uh, it's, it's an assault weapon though, so if you advance you can still use it and still charge, so it's pretty good that way. Uh, the execution of plus one strength, so you're fighting at strength four, which still isn't that impressive. It's even minus three, and uh, it's D3 damage though, so it's pretty useful if you're trying to chip away at a character. And the Exarch does get the extra wound and extra attack. Leadership's still the same. Add, and then Mirror Swords is not AP minus three, it's only AP minus two. And when you use that weapon, you can reroll the hit roll. That's it. Mm, not that. Threes to hit rerolling. Hit rolls. Okay. Now, of all of those, I'd probably stick with what I've taken before. That's the execution. I'd go for that. Because then you've got a, a model that's buried in the unit that can start fighting against the character and, and uh, the opponent's got to get through the rest of the benches in order to try and bring that X up down. Okay. Again, Banshee Master, the entire unit, no overwatch allowed. You know, if you could take a full squad of them and slam them in against an entire gun line, trying to tie up as many units as possible, very useful. Um, so long as you have an Exarch in the unit, you get War Shouts, it's minus one to hit roll against them as well, in close combat with melee weapons. And Acrobatic as well, the same rules as Jane Zars, so they should be able to keep up. No problem. I'm particularly quick out of a transport, I'm, I'm thinking, Uh, it's disembark three, within three, move eight. I think you can advance after you've moved out of a transport. I believe you can, correct me if I'm wrong, in which case you can then make an advance and charge, and it's plus three on top of that. So very, very quick across the board, which represents the style of play for these. And you'll need to be quick because they'll get gunned down very quickly. So powers of the aspect shrines. So alternate abilities for Exarch. So you go to your codex, you get for each of the aspects, your Exarch gets a certain power. Uh, but now you can swap these out. It says here if a fire dragon unit for your army contains an Exarch, you can replace the crack shot ability in that data sheet of one of the fire dragon Exarch powers opposite. If you have any fire dragon units in your army, uh, you also have access to the exemplar of the fire dragon shrine stratagem below which is one command point. Use the stratagem before the battle. When you select a Fire Dragon Exarch power from the list opposite, you can take that ability in addition to the Crack Shot, abil crack shot ability until uh, instead of replacing it, you can only use the stratagem once per battle. So just one command point lets you uh, keep the original and then take uh, one of the new abilities as well. So decisions, sort of decisions I'm gonna make is I'll look at each of the original abilities, see if it's worth keeping them. If they're not that particularly good, then happily drop them and try one of these. If the original power is really good, you want to keep it, then, and you still like one of these ones, pay the command point, take the extra power. But imagine, command points are pretty precious in the game, so it'll take a fair bit of convincing to actually pay the point here to keep both. Probably just go for the straight swap most of the time, I would imagine. So, and I know some have been pointed out on the community page, the Warhammer community page, but we'll go for all of these here, see if we can pick out some gems, I'm sure there's going to be some good ones. Fire Dragons, I have neglected these uh, for a while, let's see if there's any here that will tempt me to put them back in the army. The Dragons Bite. Whilst this unit contains a Fire Dragon Exarch, at the start of your shooting phase, you can change the type characteristic of that unit's fusion guns to Pistol 1 to the end of that phase. Yeah, that is very useful, you find yourself Stuck in combat, pistol one. Very, very, very useful that one. Interesting. Pretty good. Uh, so if you have been charged, or you find yourself you're charged in against the target, and then you continue to be locked in against it, comes around to your turn, you're able to use the weapons as pistols. No. It's the start of your shooting phase. Yeah. Okay, so you find yourself locked in combat against something. 
you can choose to stay in combat and fire as pistols instead. Yeah, it may be useful enough, could be helpful in certain situations. Tank kill. When result an attack made by a fire pike by the units Exarch against a vehicle, you can reroll 1d6 for making the damage roll. Okay, not that amazing, really, it's not bad. Burning fists, it's not, I don't think it's worth paying extra command point for. There's no way. Burning fists, melee weapons in that unit's fire dragons Exarch is equipped with have an armor penetration characteristic of minus two, damage characteristic of two. Resolve an attack made by a melee weapon by the unit's fire dragon Exarch, you can reroll the wound roll. If, if these get into combat, they, sh they shouldn't be, so. Wouldn't be looking to get into that situation. So again, I'd skip that one probably. Swift step. Once this unit contains a fire dragon exarch, this unit advances. You roll three d6, discard two of the results. Yeah, useful if you're planning to use them on foot because it's an assault weapon. Uh, they shoot with, so yeah, get a nice bit of reliable, a reliable advance to get into position to shoot. So yeah, that's okay. Maybe swap that one out uh, for the original Wall of Fire. When this unit fires Overwatch, Fire Dragon Exarch in this unit equipped with a Dragon's Breath Flamer can make a Wall of Fire attack. If he does so, instead of shooting with that model, roll 1d6 on 2 plus, it's d3 mortal wounds. It's okay. Not bad. And then Burning Heat, whilst this unit contains a Fire Dragon Exarch, can resolve an attack made by a melee weapon against this unit. It's minus 1 to hit rolls. Minus 1 to hit them. Uh, some protection. But overall, not too impressed by these. They're okay. I don't think I'll pay the extra command point for any of them. I'll just do a swap, I reckon, on some of these. Uh, Dire Avengers. Again, uh, some of my favourite models for Eldar. Beautiful models, fantastic colour scheme. So it's just the same. Here, Blade Storm. Whilst this unit contains Dire Avenger Exarch, when resolve an attack made by a ranged weapon that does not have the grenade type, I mod on this unit. I modified hit roll six, scores an additional hit. Uh, yeah, pretty good actually. Yeah, Blade Storm, cool. Just extra shots on sixes, nice. Yeah, cool, that's decent enough. Defend. Whilst this unit contains a Dire Avenger Exarch, when resolve an attack made by a melee weapon against this unit, it's minus one to the wound roll against them. Okay, and again, useful enough, just to add a bit more uh, solidarity to those. Interesting. Stand firm, whilst this unit contains a Dire Avenger Exarch, when a morale test is taken with this unit, do not roll a dice, it's auto pass morale. Again, pretty good. These are, these are decent here, because they're affecting the whole unit, so I'm liking the look of these. Add Martial Adept, this unit's uh, Dire Avenger Exarch has a weapon skill and ballistic skill 2+. Plus. That's okay. Shredding Fire, ranged weapons that do not have the grenade type in this unit's Dire Avenger Exarch is equipped with having our penetration characteristic of minus 3 and its abilities text reads uh, dash. Okay. Interesting. Ranged weapons. Pretty good, and then Avenging Strikes. Whilst this unit contains a Dire Avenger Exarch, any models in this unit have been destroyed. Resolve an attack made by model in this unit. Add one to the hit roll, and wound roll. Yeah. Any models in this unit have been destroyed. Resolving an attack made by model in this unit. Add one to hit and wound roll. That's uh, an attack. Is it, I take it that's melee and shooting. In which case, I was trying to take Well, that could be. That's particularly effect, uh, effective. That one, very powerful. Yeah, I think it is. It just says an attack. Once the unit contains a direct indirect arc, and any models in this unit have been destroyed, so you lose one model. Unit at ten, lose one or two. When resolve an attack made by a model in this unit, add one to the hit roll and wound roll. That's incredibly powerful, that one. Avenging Strikes. Yeah, so Die Avengers, uh, some very, very useful powers for them. Yeah. Dark Reapers, I run these at the moment, they've been particularly helpful, so this is a way of just making uh, them even better here. The way I've been playing them is most uh, Dark Reaper 
uh, or elder players that, that take Dark Reapers, I hold them right at the back line. They support long range, exceptionally long range fire support at the range 48. Uh, Reaper launchers, so can that be improved anyway? Rapid shot. When this unit's Dark Reaper Exarch shoots, add one to the number of attacks made by that model's ranged weapons. An extra shot. Already worth doing. Brilliant. Uh, Reign of Death. When this unit's Dark Reaper Exarch shoots with its Tempest launch, you can reroll the dice to determine the number of attacks made. Yeah. Okay, useful enough. Grim Visage. Whilst this unit contains a Dark Reaper Exarch, Minus, subtract one for the leadership characteristic of an immune source of in six. Can't see any point in that one. Long range fire. Whilst this unit contains a Dark Reaper Exarch, add six to the range characteristic of range weapons uh, models in this unit are equipped with. Again, very, very useful. Range 48 becomes range 54. <laughs> Just means that you're further away from the firepower that your opponent has. So yeah, fine, good one. Uh, it's easy to make, like an easy rule to run, you know, just adding six inches to your range. Yeah, great. Just an extra shot for the the Exarch. Oh, no, good. So some good ones here. Deadly touch. Resolve an attack made by this. With a melee weapon, this unit start Reaper Exarch and a modified wound row of six inflicts two mortal wounds to the target. Com almost completely pointless because they shouldn't be in combat find themselves in that situation and then you've got to roll a six anyway for this to work so no way focused fire when this unit is chosen to shoot with this unit start reaper x arc can target a character unit even if it's not the closest enemy unit so long as the target is within 18 of the dark reaper x arc so the target's got to be within 18 is the only drawback to that one but uh, i like the long range fire one cool and the extra shot for the x arc nice with rapid shot so yeah i'll be trying some of those i reckon for sure uh, it's Howling Benches, so brand new models, they have their Phoenix Lord, and uh, now these, for the, the Exarch. So, Graceful Avoidance. Whilst this unit contains a Howling Banshee Exarch, when a model in this unit would lose a wound in the fight phase, roll 1d6 and a 5 plus the wound is not lost. Great. Brilliant. Anything to help them make a bit more survivable, so fantastic. I imagine Eldar players are going to be excited about these because yeah, the um, aspect warriors are decent enough as they are anyway. But this is this is really good. Piercing strike. When this unit is chosen to fight with a Howling Banshee ex Exarch in this unit that is equipped with an executioner, can make a piercing strike. If they do, at the end of the phase, minus one for the attack's characteristic and add three to the strength characteristic of that Howling Banshee Exarch. And that executioner has a damage characteristic of three. Nice. Yeah, cool. Piercing strike. Great. Disarming strike. At the start of the fight phase, you can select one enemy model within each of the units Howling Banshee Exarch. Minus two from the attacks characteristic of that enemy model to a minimum of one to the end of that phase. So particularly useful against sort of very powerful characters and machines and so on but they have a sort of a limited number of attacks. So I think the example that Games Workshop used was like, a, it even works on the Imperial Knight, and it comes at you with four attacks, and then you can take minus two from the attacks characteristic of that enemy model. <laughs> so, pretty amazing. Yeah, so to a minimum of one, so you could double up with units of Howling Banshees to really knock them down with their attacks. Select one enemy model. Yeah. Or well, you can gang up against a character and just knock the number of attacks right down. Scary, that one. There's some real gems here. Alright, in amongst these. Bit over, overpowered, I don't know. <laughs> Seems to be pretty, pretty good here. Uh, Whirling Blades. Add one to the characteristic of the Exarch. If the Alien Banish Exarch is equipped with Mirror Swords, add two to the characteristic instead. So you can bump that up and make it even better if you like the, the Mirror Swords. So yeah, pretty good. Uh, decapitating Strikes. Resolve an attack made by a melee weapon by this unit's Alien Banish Exarch. And a modified hit roll of six inflicts a mortal wound. In addition to any normal damage, so not bad. And it's just you only get three attacks, it's quite quite a low chance of getting that mortal wound. There's, there's some of these here are way more powerful. 
Nerve Shredding Shriek. When this unit finishes a charge move, if it includes the Exarch, you can select one enemy unit within an inch of this unit to roll 1d6 and a 4 plus. It's d3 mortal wounds. Great. Yeah, it's a brilliant one set. Yeah, really good. Souping Hawks. I had a unit of these primed and ready to paint, and then I sold them. So, tragically, because they're still nice models. So, that maybe if they come out of plastic at some point, maybe a unit to, to add to the collection. So, because I always saw them as a bit weak, really. They sort of land and do their thing, and never that effective, really. Uh, just, but they have their uses for sure, jumping around the table and so on. Uh, but can they be improved here? Intercept, then. Whilst this unit contains a sweeping arc, X arc, resolve an attack mode by model in this unit against any unit that can fly, you can reroll the hit roll. It's okay. Suppressing fire this unit, sweeping all Exarch fires overwatch enemy units. Uh, subtract two from the charge rolls made for the unit to the end of the phase. So again, it's, it's okay, it's mediocre that one. Evade, whilst this unit contains a sweeping all Exarch models in the unit have a five plus invun save. Again, it's all right, it's okay. It'll make too much difference, usually it's like a five man squad anyway, so you're gonna block a, a little bit of damage coming through. Rapid Assault. If this unit made a charge move or was charged this turn, add two to the attacks characteristic of the unit's swooping hawk exarch this turn. Yep, yeah, fast shot range weapons uh, the exarch is, exarch is equipped with have a type characteristic of assault six. So nice, pretty good. And there's swooping barrage. Whilst this unit contains a swooping hawk exarch, add one to, add one to rolls made for this unit's swooping hawk grenade pack ability. So bonus for that. Ah, now this is this is my territory here. Striking scorpions. So that's this is my auto include unit here. It has to <laughs> I have to they have to be in. I can't have an Eldar army on this channel and no striking scorpions. So <laughs> so uh, let's see if these. I look I do look forward to the rescobs. Still love the old models. I I could never get rid of them, but uh, I I would reckon I'd have to get the newer models. Worried about scale as well. If you compare the two, I'd imagine uh, the newer models are going to grow a little bit. The old lead models of a sort of a slightly smaller scale. I'd imagine uh, the new striker scorpions. Any of the new models are going to grow in size slightly. Yeah, but uh, anyway, Stalker is the first one. Master unit contains a striker scorpion exarch and is wholly within. Oh. Ah, I've misread that. I was reading this one earlier. This is interesting here. Maybe one for discussion in the comments section. Master unit contains a striker scorpion exarch and. Ah, oh no, it's talking about the unit. I was wondering if it was just the scorpion exarch model, but I think. It's got to be the whole unit has to be in a terrain feature. Whilst this unit contains a striker scorpion exarch and is wholly within. Holy honor within a terrain feature. Let's talk about the whole unit. Okay. When resolving an attack made by this range with a ranged weapon against this unit, it's minus one to the hit roll. So this is very useful. You know, and correct me if I'm wrong, you could combine that with a LATOC and you could be stacking up a minus two with no psychic shenanigans going on. That could be added on, on top of that. Now, I've been using my scorpions as like a bodyguard for my psychers, so that would fit with my style of play for using these. Interesting. Crushing blow. Add two to the strength characteristic of the unit's scorpion. Unit striker scorpion exarch. Ah, it's not to just the, the claw; it's the model. So, is the claw times two? I think it is. In which case, the claw becomes strength ten. Because you're you're adding it not to the weapon; you're adding it to the unit's profile. Yeah, so claw fights at strength 10, unbelievable. Very useful. Trying to put wounds on vehicles and so on. Not that the unit's really designed to be doing that really, they're more for anti-infantry. So strength 6 is usually good enough anyway, 3 is to wound uh, the tougher infantry and then 2 is to wound anything that's tough as 3. So I'd, I'm looking at Stalker here just for the way I'm playing mine at the moment if you check out the battle reports. Scorpion's Grasp, resolve attack made by a scorpion's claw uh, from the Exarch, unmodified hit roll of six inflicts one mortal wound on the target in addition to any normal damage. And if you pay the command point and keep that one, it's sixes generates an extra attack, and those sixes also inflict mortal wounds. Pretty scary, that actually. Cool. Uh, ambush, whilst this unit contains the Exarch and is wholly on or within a train feature, this 
unit can always fight first in the fight phase, even if they didn't charge. Uh, similar ability, alternate, so on and so on. Okay, so that's right. Withdraw. At the end of the fight phase, this unit contains a striker scorpion X cycles of an inch of any enemy models. This unit can make a fullback move of up to six inches as if it were your movement phase. So you can pull out if you want to. Yep, and that's useful because it's at the end of the fight phase, not your turn. It's the fight phase. So you could pull out in the, at the end of the opponent's fight phase, I believe. Then it becomes your turn and then you're free to move off, charge again or whatever you want to do. So. That one's useful. Scorpion Sting. Blaster's unit contains a striker and Scorpion Exarch. Add one to the rolls made for this unit's Mandy Blaster's ability. That is very cool. That is another really good one as well. There's some great ones here for the striker Scorpions. I love Mandy Blasters. They're brilliant. And that would make the unit, unit 10 of those deadly against things like characters and so on. Wow. Yep. Actually making them more effective by by 33 percent, you know, one third more effective. Yep. Difficult choices that. Oh, it's pretty good ones, right? Shining spears. The unit really that sort of helped my Eldar army through this season uh, to turn things around. No, I'm running nine of them at the moment. Yes, it's one of the key focal units of the current list that I'm running. So let's see what we can improve here, because the 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 Exarch Powers is not that amazing, so bound to take one of these ones here. Just do a straight swap without spending the command point. So we've drawn. At the end of the fight phase, if this unit contains the Exarch, is within an inch of any models. This unit can make a fallback move up to six inches. As if it were your movement phase. Yeah, similar to the Striking Scorpions. Very, very useful for these. The ability to pull out, especially at the end of your opponent's fight phase, and then free to move off. Oh, very, very good. Brilliant. Excellent. Tactically so useful. Yeah. Uh, sweeping dive. Whilst this unit contains a Shining Spear Exarch, when a charge draw is made for this unit, plus one to the result. Maybe in combination with, uh, with other abilities you could stack, start stacking those up, but by itself it's not that impressive. Uh, Blade Master. Paragon Sabre, I don't use that, but this unit, Shining Spear, is equipped with, has a damage characteristic of 3. It's pretty scary. <laughs> damage 3. Lancer, resolve an attack made by Laser Lance or Star Lance by this unit, Shining Spear, Exarch. Modified hit roll of 6, scores an additional hit. Not bad, you know, 3 chances of getting that on a 6. Not going to happen too often. But it's additional hits, not attacks. So, yeah, it could all of a sudden you could pull out, you know, roll three dice, you get two sixes, and all of a sudden that's like four hits. Skilled Rider. Uh, this unit's Shining Spear Exarch has a three plus invulnerable save against attacks made by ranged weapons. I would not take that because I'd start, start to be tempted to start tanking hits on him and then lose him. I'll probably avoid that one. Heart Strike. Resolve an attack made by a melee weapon in this unit's Shining Spear Exarch and a modified hit roll of 6 inflicts a mortal wound in addition to normal damage. I would go for... You can see the Sweeping Dive being useful if it's combined with other abilities out there that can add more inches onto the charge. Um, if you're trying to play Webway Portal for example to bring the unit in that's going to be a welcome addition there, that extra inch. Uh, but the withdrawal there, I think that one's useful. Hmm. Okay, some decisions to make for Shining Spears. Crimson Hunters here. We've got Warp Spiders as well. Fascinating to see if we can see if there's any way to make them better, because I've neglected them not thinking they're particularly good. Uh, so, uh, Aerial Predator. I'm resolving a tank made by a ranged weapon by this model against a unit that can fly. Add one's damage characteristic of that weapon for that attack. It's so, okay. Uh, evade, 5 plus in one save. Uh, Hawkeye, this model does not suffer the penalty of moving firing heavy weapons. Right, okay. And then strafing assault. When resolve an attack made by a ranged weapon by this model against unit that cannot fly. We roll wound rolls of 1. Okay, and then Eyes of Cain. Resolve an attack made by a ranged weapon of this model. The target does not receive the benefit of cover to its save and throw. So, they're all okay here. Nothing particularly devastating. And then aerial maneuvering. This model moves, you can pivot it up to 180 degrees before it moves instead of just 90. 
if you really need to turn it all the way around. Okay, yeah, not too bad. Warp spiders. Come on, warp spiders. Let's see if there's anything decent here. Surprise assault. Last this unit contains the X arc, where I'm going to take my bite with a death spinner by a model in this unit. In a turn in which it will set up on the battlefield using the warp strike ability, you can reroll hit roll. Right, reroll hits. We're better. Not bad. Withdraw at the end of the fight phase. This unit contains a warp spider X arc. This unit can fall back. Make a fallback move up to six inches if it were your movement phase. Okay. I, with this book coming out like this, I take it you're going to have a long wait for a new Eldar Codex. And a long wait for a new Trikari Codex, I think, now. And Games Workshop will be going through the Imperial stuff here, Space Marines and so on. And after that, not sure, who knows, but I don't think it's going to be this, uh, these factions here, if they're releasing these kind of rules. Could be wrong, but uh, Web of Deceit. Once per battle in your movement phase, if this unit contains the X arc, it can make a warp jump instead of moving normally. Remove this unit from the battlefield and set it up at the end of that phase. Anyone on the battlefield is born nine inches away from enemy models. Ah. This is your Web of Deceit then. Ability. Useful. Spider's Lair. Whilst this unit contains a warp, Spider X arc is wholly on within a terrain feature. When an enemy unit finishes a charge with an inch of this unit, roll 1d6. On a 3+, plus, the enemy unit suffers d3 more to wounds. You don't really want to get charged, though. Yeah, okay, Flickering Assault, whilst this unit contains a Warp Spider X arc. Models in this unit can pile up to 6 inches instead of 3. But why would you want to be in combat? So maybe to disrupt stuff, but... Okay, Spider's Bite, Power Blades in this unit, X arc. A strength characteristic of plus 1. And damage of two. Web of Deceit then probably is the one I'd go for. Just a way of um, manoeuvring, getting out of trouble and so on. Okay. Oh, this is interesting. Okay, Runes of Fortune. Next, we'll take a look at these uh, lower powered, easier to manifest powers here. Age Workshop starting to. Dilute the smite power here with multiple options just to add a bit of variety. Interesting they're doing this. So instead of knowing smite psychic power, craft world psycho models can instead know one of the psychic powers from the runes of fortune discipline. Smite is pretty good though. So these need to be pretty impressive to try and tempt me away but we'll see what you can get here so you can roll or you can select before the battle begins you don't suck up and craft psychic powers that model that knows powers from the runes of fortune discipline using the table below okay here we go fateful divergence it has a warp charge value of four so it's even easier to very easy to manifest this one if manifest is like one friendly craft or unit within six of the psyker to so start your next psychic phase you can reroll a single hit roll wound roll or save roll for that unit and that is useful for example a wraith knight and i'm hitting with the heavy wraith cannons i could use that to reroll one of the wounds two's to wound i roll a one i to reroll on standby so that could be useful that way some important roll so you could yeah It's a single roller, yeah. Witch Strike. So warp charge value of four. If manifest until the start of the next psychic phase, add two to damage characteristic that psychic as melee weapons. Okay, if if that's the roll for them. Smite. So can a, a question I've got is can a warlock with its low grade smite, swap that out and take one of these, in which case I'd be tempted to swap the warlock powers out, get rid of that lower grade smite, uh, and then go for some of these here, but I'm not sure if you're allowed to do that. Ghost walk. So walk charge value of six. If manifested, select one friendly craft world unit within six inches of the psyker. To the start of your next psychic phase, no charge roll is made for that unit, add two to the result. Ah. So. Yep. 
So you could stack that up on top of your benches, for example. Is it? Yes, benches. Terrifying. Plus three to the charge, plus two to the charge. Yeah. You probably want a fast here and a jet bike just to keep up with the unit, but uh, it looks like you can really stack up the charge rolls here. Eldar unit's going very quick around the board here. Crushing orb. So warp charge value of four. If manifested, select one enemy character unit within 18 and visible to the side can roll 3d6. For each roll of a five plus, that character suffers, character unit suffers one more to wound. So you pick on characters. These are all pretty good here. Well, not all of them, sorry. A, a few of them are, uh, are, are pretty good. I'd be mightily tempted to drop smite on some of the models. Because remember, if you've got multiple psychers, that smite becomes harder and harder to manifest. So it's worth moving out into different some different powers here. Uh, focus will, it has a warp charge value of six. If manifested, select one friendly craft world psyker model within six inches of this psyker until the end of this phase, when it's neither which test is taken for that model, add two to the total. Yeah, uh, tactically useful. Yeah. Yeah, so you could, uh, for example, soup up Eldred and make him really good at denying the witch. And then that model has, I think you can deny three in a turn. So you really make him really good at denying powers. So these are very, very helpful, these. Anyone that complains about how powerful Eldar are, <laughs> they're going to be going mad <laughs> for this book here. Uh, impair senses. So warp charge value of six. If manifested, select one enemy unit within 18 inches are visible to the Psyker. To the start of the next Psyker phase, that unit is chosen to shoot with. Models in that unit can only target the closest visible enemy unit unless the target of the attack is within 18 of the shooting model. Right, so you're trying to protect um, the unit of Dark Rapers. You manifest this, and uh, again, it's just, you know, a certain enemy unit that wants to fire at long range. This could disrupt that pretty good, so that one's useful. So some very, very useful powers here. Yep, imagine those will prove to be very popular amongst Eldar players. So this book here is a stack of rules. Getting a lot of rules here. Craft world attributes, a lot of stuff for the Eldar children. So this is where you're able to, uh, similar to the Space Marines, you're able to construct your own kind of craft world with your own unique abilities. And it's unless otherwise stated, your chosen craft world has two craft world abilities from the following list. So I'll run through these to get an idea of what kind of, how uh, you can personalize your own craft world. Uh, children of Cain, result in attack made by my weapon of an aspect warrior unit. Aspect model with this attribute, unmodified wound roll of six. Add one to the damage characteristic of that weapon for that attack. So if you're going heavy, heavily on aspect units in your army, and especially combat. Yeah, for melee weapons, yeah. So it would fit in very nicely. I always, I don't know if I've ever said this on, on any of the videos before, I always wanted to do a pure striking scorpion themed army. So, yeah. Multiple units of striking scorpions, you know, like three units of ten or even, or even more, and then uh, well, it needs to be a lot more than that, maybe th six units of ten <laughs> striking, something like that, for example. Any other supporting models paint up in the same colour scheme, and then dotted about with some characters paint up in the colour scheme as well. Uh, and then you could construct your own sort of craft world attributes to really enhance that. So this one would be children who can go for that one. Plus one to damage characteristic of that weapon on a six. Yeah, pretty cool. Uh, Children of Morai Heg. Resolve an attack by a model with this attribute. In unit of at least half its starting number of models has been destroyed. Add one to the hit roll. For the purposes of this attribute, destroyed models return to unit of this attribute still considered to have been destroyed. Children, it's okay. Children, hard to easily forget that during the middle of a game. Children of Prophecy. When a psychic test is taken for a model with this attribute, each individual dies roll of one. It's treated as a two. So, a little bit more reliable, and I take that would help reduce the chances of um, perils coming through as well. Double one. Children of the Open Skies, when this unit, unit this ability can fly, advances, 
add additional two inches to move characteristic of the models in the unit to the end of the phase. Ah, so you can add that to your shining spears, for example. Yep, just being careful though, if you fly, can't charge if you advance. So be careful with that one, but useful. Diviners of Fate, uh, six up in one save for models. So I take it that would be on your vehicles as well, if they're in the craft world. And the Wraith Knight. Yep, maybe. Models with this ability. Don't think it's. No. Don't think it's restricted. No, so I, I think they would get it. Expert crafters. When this unit fires Overwatch or is chosen to shoot or fight with, you can reroll a single hit roll and you can reroll a single wound roll. That's pretty good. That's very useful. For each unit. Yeah, brilliant. Uh, Grim. When a Morato is take of this unit, uh, you, could, you can reroll the dice. Hail of Doom. Like the reroll, hit roll, reroll, wound roll is really good. Very, very useful. God. Hail of Doom. Uh, I'm going to attack my bite with a shuriken weapon by a model of this attribute against enemy unit within 12 inches of that model. Improve the armor penetration characteristic of that model by one. For example, AB0 becomes AB minus one. So good for guardian bombs, landing, and so on. This does not affect the abilities of the shuriken weapons, so it's still an AB minus three. Uh, it lists the sh shuriken weapons there. Headstrong. A uh, charge roll is made for unit this attribute, add one to the results, a plus one to charges. Wow, so you can stack, we've seen some of the other powers earlier, where you're starting to stack up the distance you can charge, so there's some, some very powerful combos going on here. Hunters of Ancient Relics, add one to attacks characteristic of models with this attribute, whilst their units are in three inches of any objective markers. Interesting. Uh, Marshall. Citizenry. I'm just going to attack my by Guardian model in this with this attribute. Reroll hit rolls of one. Three rolling ones. It's okay. Masterful shots. Resolve an attack my by model with this attribute. The target does not receive the benefit of cover, so it scrubs cover. That's okay. Master of Concealment. Resolve an attack my by a range weapon against unit this attribute by model. It's more than 12 inches away. The unit is treated as having the benefit of cover to its saving throw. So, extra bonus there as well. But uh, yeah, so great combos for sure. I think there's some more here. Yep. God, a lot of options, maybe too many going on here. Mobile fighters. When resolve an attack mode model with this attribute in a turn in which that model's unit disembarked from a transport, we roll hit rolls of one. Okay, savage blades. Resolve an attack made by a melee weapon by a model with this attribute in a turn in which that model's unit made a charge move, was charged, performed dragon intervention, we roll hit rolls of one for that. Okay. Strike and fade. If you select a craft world attribute, you cannot select a second. The units of this attribute can charge in turn in which they fell back. Wow, a model with this attribute is not within three inches of enemy enemy any enemy units. Makes a consolidation move. It does not have to end it, that move closer to the nearest enemy model. So pretty good. Students of all, at the start of your turns, each vehicle model with this attribute regains a wound. Wow, useful if you're running things like Wave Serpents and so on. Yeah, uh, Vipers, that's what I was thinking of. Useful things like Vipers as well. Okay. Superior Shurikens here. At four inches, the range characteristic of Shuriken weapons. Um, so yeah, that would be Avenger Shuriken Catapults. Nice. Yeah, pretty good, actually. That one's great. That range 18's always been a bit annoying for the Dire Avengers, but now you can make it range 22, potentially. Vengeful Blades, resolve an attack made by a melee weapon by a model with this attribute against a Chaos unit in the turn in which that model's unit made a charge move. Was charged, performed a intervention. You can reroll the hit roll. Uh, Warding Runes, a model with this attribute would lose a wound as a result of a mortal wound. Roll 1d6, it's a 5+, plus. the wound is not lost. Uh, Webway Warriors. Webway Strike Stratagem can be used one additional time per battle for each detachment. In your army that contains units of this attribute, excluding auxiliary support detachments, the second and subsequent uses of this stratagem can only be used to set up units of this attribute in the webway. And then the Wrath of the Dead, resolve an attack by a Wraith Construct, this attribute reroll, a wound roll of one. 
Yeah. And it's an attack, so it could be shooting or close combat. Useful. Again, I'm thinking of the heavy rave cannons, usually twos to wound. And you mess up with that, you're going to get a reroll. With at least one of the dice. Okay, this, the craft world's covered. Boy, have they got some powers. Loads. Loads and loads. But then when you narrow it down, there's six there. We're only going to take one for a squad. So there's a lot listed, but not. You're only going to be picking a handful out here to use in your games. I guess uh, you're picking these. Let's just check in here. Uh, I guess this is done uh, whilst you're putting your list together, or is it done once you know who your opponent is? I'm just wondering about that one. But uh, I imagine it's whilst your list is being uh, put together, I would imagine. Psychic powers, you can choose which powers you're going to use. You put your deck together once you know who you're playing against, I believe. So just wondering if it's the same as that. So, but anyway, Drakari here. So Denizens of the Dark City, and it's uh, the re-sculpt for Drazar and the Incubi models as well. And again, I have these in lead, the Incubi models, never get, did get Drazar because never liked the model, uh, but now they've, they've all been redone and are pretty incredible. So I we'll have to get the Incubi models and maybe Drazar in plastic as well. Okay, points values there, uh, the name generator, and Drazar, Master of Blades now. Again, brilliant job Games Workshop have done. Again, so well done, really nice. 120 points. Gets you power level 6, movement 7, just because of the heavier armour. Weapon skill, ballistic skill 2 plus, strength 4, toughness 4. Uh, 6 wounds, plenty of wounds, 4 attacks, leadership 9, and a 2 plus save. So it's a decent character. And, and in my current list I've proposed, I've got two units of five Incubi here, so this character would fit in well, I'm sh and I'm sure was going to uh, give you some decent bonuses here. Executioner's Demiglaives. So you choose your profile, you can fight single blade, which is AP, uh, is plus one strength, fighting it's strength five, AP minus three, two damage at a time. So these are experts at bringing down anything that's primaris here. Dual blades is strength for the user, which is still strength four, Safety minus two, but still two damage. When the bearer fights with dual blades, you can make additional two attacks with this weapon as well. It's up to two, six attacks on two plus to hit. Gets power from pain. It's just so interesting. So six is to ignore damage. Ignore wounds come through to start off with. Okay, murderous assault. If this model made a charge move this turn, you can choose to fight with this model an additional time this turn. That's utterly deadly. Wow, okay, so. Great, charge them into heavy infantry. Get them stuck in against Primaris models and start hacking down. Yes, okay, I'm starting to like the idea of this model. Lethal Precision. Resolve an attack made by a melee weapon of this model. A modified wound roll of six. Adds two to the damage characteristic of that weapon for that attack. Now I'm starting to think with that kind of damage coming through, damage four. Yeah, and the ability to fight again against whatever you've charged into could be a tank, potential eight attacks, or even ten attacks. Sorry, twelve attacks. Yeah, and damage four. You look at you could uh, you could go vehicle hunting here. Hmm. Eternal warrior, five plus invon save, useful enough. Tormentors. When a morale test is taken, enemy unit to win six of any Incubi units from your army, and the result of that morale test is equal to the highest leadership characteristic of the enemy unit. The test is fouled, and one model flees that enemy unit. Uh, leadership of, of nine here. Okay. Our Master of Blades. Add one to the wound rolls for friendly Incubi units whilst they win six. I take it he gets. He is an Incubi unit. Yep. So he partakes of that as well. So he's on plus one to his wound rolls. That is deadly, and uh, that is an incredible bonus to give to your Drakari, mo uh, to your Incubi models as well. 
Yeah, I say Incubi, by the way. It's Inca, Incubi, I think is the correct pronunciation, but anyway. Yeah, he's brilliant. God. And, you know, the excitement of having brand new, nice plastic models, fantastic sculpts. They've, they've, they've put him on top of these Eldar runic ruins here, just so his head and shoulders, you know, way above the regular Incubi as well. So, oh, wow. Very cool. Very, very nice. Always like the models. The sort of Drakari heavy infantry that hack down space marines is a great, very satisfying thing to do. Sorry, James. <laughs> so this this model here is looking particularly good. Yeah, nice. No, a brilliant focal point. Okay. Yes. So nice. Very nice. And there's your Incubi models. They're expensive enough. Sixteen points a time. Uh, the wall glit, the glaive is zero, so it's a straight 16. I run them in units of five, you still get tons of attacks because you're running at power level four for unit of five, you get the clave X in with the unit. Uh, the incubus is movement seven, weapon skill, ballistic skill three plus, strength three, toughness three, one win. Three attack size base, which is fantastic, three up, so you've got a heavy armor. The clave X is on two plus for his weapon skill, which is brilliant, does have the extra wound. An extra attack on top of that, which is great. Leadership 9 as well. So the clave X is excellent. Uh, the clave then is um, plus 1 strength, so fighting at strength 4. So, you know, 3 swind Ashramatar models becomes 2s with uh, Drazar, Master of Blades. Uh, and then 4 swind Space Marines becomes 3s. And AP minus 3. Brilliant. Only one damage though for the clave, yeah. And, and then uh, you can go for demi claves instead of one clave. So single attack is plus one, AP minus three, uh, plus one strength, AP minus three, just the same as a clave. Uh, but then you can go for dual blades, you can split and use them, which is a great idea. Strength of the user, so only strength three, uh, AP minus two but then you get two extra attacks. So if you find yourself fighting against guardsmen, you can split the blades and hack down more of them. Cool. Yeah, two step, brilliant. Six attacks for a Clavex. Cool. Get power from pain, lethal precision. So any sixes is damage two, so still get that. You know, so unit of five of them still getting 16 attacks, 16 or up to 18 attacks with the dual blades. So tons of attacks from a small unit. And then Tormentors, uh, they're all there as well. Models running away. Brilliant. Nice, brilliant re-sculpted. So, you know, key character re-sculpted, an appropriate unit re-sculpted as well. Brilliant combination. All right. uh, and then, you know, commercially, again, from Games Workshop, they'll be selling the two lots together. The, you know, people are going to want to buy the character, they're going to want to buy the box set. So it's great to sculpt and release both at the same time. So, excellent strategy here. Obsessions then for the Tricari. So sort of customizing your own uh, raiding party here of Tricari. So we'll see what you get here. So Kabul Obsessions. So there's some in the codex. There's a whole load more now. So uh, Dark Murph, subtract one from the leadership characteristic of enemy units whilst within six inches of any units from your army of this obsession. Um, so I like doesn't sound very good, but I can imagine you could stack it with other abilities to make it pretty potent. The first time an enemy unit fails a morale test in battle, add one to the leadership characteristic models from your army with this obsession to the end of the battle. Deadly deceivers. Units of this obsession can charge in turn in which they fell back. Interesting. When an enemy unit finishes a charge with an inch of any units of this obsession, roll 1d6 on a 6, the enemy suffers a lot of wind. Disdain for lesser beings. None of them stick out too much at the moment. When Rout is stake of the unit of this obsession, no more than one model can flee. It's okay. Reticulous flayers. Unit of this obsession that has the power from pain ability. Always benefits from the eager to flay bonus. Uh, even during the first battle round. Resolve an attack made by melee weapon by model of this obsession. Against unit is not a vehicle or titanic and a modified hit roll of six. Automatic scores a hit and successfully wounds the target as well. Interesting. Uh, mobile raiders. Plus three to move characteristic of models of this obsession that can fly. Yeah, useful for your raiders, venoms and so on. Soulbound, 
When a nerd to suffering roll is made for a model of this obsession, you can reroll once. Uh, units of this ability, units of this obsession do not have the power from pain ability, instead gain a nerd to suffering bonus. Okay, so yeah, pretty good. Toxin Crafters. Resolve an attack made by a poisoned weapon by model of this obsession, an unmodified wound row of six. Add one to the damage characteristic of that weapon for that attack. It does, this does not apply to artifacts of cruelty. For the purposes of this obsession, a poisoned weapon is any weapon that has the poisoned weapon ability. So, okay, like an agonizer, for example. Um, yeah, but even um, splinter rifles and so on, poisoned weapons, yeah. So, yeah, pretty good. And then Webway Raiders, uh, Webway Portal Stratagem, can be used one additional time per battle. Useful. Uh, in your army that contains units of the succession. Okay. Witch Cults. Obsessions. Acrobatic display. If you select this Witch Cult Obsession, you cannot select a second. Whilst a model... Oh yes, you are getting access to two, just like we saw earlier with the Craft World Order. Yeah. Okay. So... Not bad, actually, if you start stacking them up in pairs. This one you can't, though. Add model this Obsession that has an Invun save. Is within an inch of enemy units, improve its invon save by one. Interesting. To maximum three plus. Uh, so, yeah, your witches, when they get stuck in and they have the dodge ability, that's particularly good. Whilst the model of this obsession that does not have an invon save is within an inch of enemy units, has a six plus invon save. Quite easy to remember and very, very useful. Art of Pain. Whilst units of this obsession have the power from pain ability of an inch of enemy units, they treat that current bat around as being. One higher than it actually is when determining what bonuses you get from the power of the pain. Okay. Next one is uh, Berserk Fury. Is it? It's F U G U E. Correct me if I'm wrong on that one. Uh, resolve an attack made by melee weapon by a model of this obsession that made a charge move, was charged, or performed heroic intervention. This turn, a modified hit roll of six scores an additional hit. You cannot select this obsession, you already have this uh, selected the precise killer's obsession. Six is for additional hits. Pretty good. Quite straightforward. It's nice bonuses there. Precise killers. Resolve an attack mode by melee weapon by a model with this obsession. Unmodified wound roll of six. Uh, improves the penetration characteristic of that weapon for that attack by one. So AP zero becomes AP minus one. That's useful. You know, which is attacking with a standard weapon is AP minus zero. But a little bit of ability to put an AP minus one would be helpful enough. You cannot select this obsession if you've gone for the Berserk Fury. Obsession, however it's pronounced. Slashing Impact, next. After model of this Obsession finishes a charge move, you can select one enemy infantry biker or monster unit within an inch of it, or all d6, and a 5 plus, it's a mortal wound. Quite tame, really, that one. Um, yeah, Stimulant Innovators. When the Hyperstim Backlash stratagem is used on a unit of this Obsession, it only costs one command point instead of two. Okay, and then test of skill. Resolve an attack made by model of this obsession against a monster or vehicle unit. With any models that have wounds characteristic of 10 or more, add one to the wound roll. Okay, and then trophy takers. When your opponent takes a morale test of unit in which any models were destroyed as a result of an attack made by a melee weapon by a model with this obsession this turn, they must roll 2d6 and discard the lowest. If both results are the same, discard either of them. Okay, I uh, not utterly deadly. I think the, the craft world stuff's more powerful here, but there's some helpful ones for sure. Uh, Hemoculus Coven Obsessions, Artists of the Flesh. If you select this Hemoculus Coven Obsession, you cannot select a second. Resolve an attack against the unit of this obsession. Subtract one for the damage characteristic of that weapon, making that attack to a minimum of one. Yeah, helpful, just to make them difficult to wound. Dark Harvest. After unit of this obsession fails a charge move, each one that you you can select one enemy unit within an inch of that model and roll 1d6 and a 5 plus the enemy unit suffers a mortal wound. Okay, and then dark. An enemy unit. Yeah, 5 pluses, multiple 5 pluses. Yeah, pretty good that one actually. Dark Technomancers. 
When a unit that substantially fires Overwatch or is chosen to shoot with, you can choose to enhance any or all of the ranged weapons models that units are equipped with. If you do so until the end of the phase, resolve an attack made by that weapon, add one to the wound roll, add one to the damage characteristic of that weapon for that attack. If any unmodified wound rolls of one are made for the attacks, the enhanced weapon, the firing model suffers a mortal wound. So it's a bit of a trade-off, but uh, that's pretty good as well. Experimental creations, add one to the strength characteristic of all models of this obsession. Resolve an attack made by poisoned weapon model of this obsession against a unit that has the lower toughness characteristic. The attacking model, add one to the wound roll. The purpose of this obsession, a poisoned weapon, uh, is as any weapon with a poisoned weapon ability. So, a lot of rules here to remember. So I, I like to choose ones that are easy to remember. You know, in the middle of a game, you've got to remember straightforward rule. Always remember it because you can go for a really clever rule, and if you forget it, it's no help to you. Uh, hungry for flesh. No charge rolls made for the unit. This obsession. Add one to result. Plus one to charge. It's easy and useful enough. Master of uh, mutagens. 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 <laughs> mutagens. I think. Uh, resolve an attack by, by a poisoned weapon by model of this obsession against a unit that is not a vehicle titanic. Unmodified hit roll of six. Automatic scores a hit and wounds the target. Do not make a wound roll. Uh, this does not apply to artifact scrawty. For the purposes of this obsession, poisoned weapon is listed in the codex. Master torturers. Uh, when the torturers craft stratagem from the codex is used on a unit of this obsession, it only costs one command point instead of two. And then obsessive collectors. When an enemy unit is destroyed as a result of an attack made by a melee weapon by a model in a unit from your army with this obsession, you can select one model in that unit to regain up to D3 lost wounds. If the attacking model is, I thought it said Yarrick. If the attacking model is a rack, <laughs> you can instead return up to D3 destroyed models to the unit. Cool. Place them on the battlefield and unit coherence if models placed in this way, they are not returned to the battlefield. Wow. Pretty good. Okay, the last section here is the Yanari, which I've avoided. I just sort of like to run pure armies, so like, uh, and try and make the army work. So pure Harlequins, pure Drakari, pure Craft. That's sort of the way I play it, but everyone has their own tastes and the way they wish to play. Uh, but if you like a, a bit of everything, then. And go for your Nari here for sure. Uh, so we'll cover these units and abilities here. So Psychos of the Reborn, instead of known powers on the runes of battle, runes of fate, or phantasmancy discipline. Yunari psychers must know their powers from the Revenant discipline. So they've been retrained, it's different psychic powers. Uh, abilities, if your army is battleforged, all troops, units and Yunari detachments gain the Reclaim the Galaxy ability. In addition, if your army is battleforged, all Yunari units, other than Beasts, Incubi and Scourge units in Yunari detachments gain the Strength from Death ability. To Reclaim the Galaxy, unit this ability within range of objective market controls it, even if there are more any models within range of it. Uh, if an enemy unit has a similar ability, it's the other most models. Strength from Death. When a unit is destroyed, Units from your army of this ability draw strength from death until the end of the turn. If a unit is drawing strength from death, that unit fights first in the fight phase, even if it did not charge. If the enemy unit has units that have charged or have, or that have an ability that allows them to fight first in the fight phase, then alternate choosing units to fight with starting the player's turn is taking place. Okay. The unit is destroyed. Units from your ability to draw strength from death to the end of the turn. I'm resolving an attack made by a melee weapon by model that is drawing strength from death and that made a charge move this turn or has another ability that allows it to fight at first in the fight phase. Add one to the hit roll. Okay. So, uh, you've rain. I think the pronunciation here. 200, sorry, 115, <laughs> I scared you there, 200, uh, sorry, 115 points for this one, so 115 points here uh, for the Evrain here, Some fascinating models for sure, uh, power level 6, it's armed with the Carvia, the Sword of Sorrows, only one model per army, movement 8, weapon skill, ballistic skill 2+, plus, strength 3, toughness 3, 5 wounds, 
four attacks, leadership nine and six up save. Uh, the Sword of Sorrows is plus one strength, fighting at strength four, eight minus two, and it is D3 damage. Get strength from death. Herald of the Unad. When another Aldari model is slain within six inches of this model, you can roll one D6 on a four plus. It regains, this model regains a lost wound. Wow. If that model was a psychic, you can immediately regenerate one additional psychic power for that model to know from the Revenant Discipline. Brilliant, brilliant powers here. Uh, it's four plus in one save for rune suit. Uh, Gyrinx familiar. When a psychic test or deny the witch test is taken with this model, add one to the test. Very useful. And then a the revered figurehead. This model can embark aboard any outdoor transport model, regardless of that model's transport restrictions. Uh, you can attempt to manifest two psychic powers, we'll look at those in just a moment, and attempt to deny one. You know, smite and two powers in the Revenant Discipline. But uh, that, that power there, the Herald of Yunad, is uh, very, very useful. God. Very, very useful. The Visage, next. 80 points. Okay, um, power level 4, movement 8, weapon skill, ballistic skill 2, plus strength 3, toughness 3, 5 wins, 5 attacks, leadership 9 and 3 up save. It's armed with the Asuvar, the Sword of Silence Screams, as a force shield. Um, so the sword is plus 2 strength, fighting at strength 5, 8 minus 3 and D3 damage. If any, if any models in a unit are destroyed as a result of an attack made by this weapon, subtract one with the leadership characteristic of that unit to the end of the turn. So get strength from death, champion of Yuned here, when... Another Aldari model is slain with a 6 inches model. You can roll, you can roll a d6 and a 4 plus. The model regains a wound. If that model was a character. Now one to this model's attacks characteristic. Right. Useful. Way of the Blade. Reroll hit rolls of 1 for attacks made by melee weapon by a friendly Yunari model. Whilst their unit is within 6 inches of this model. Okay, and the Warden of Yervain. Uh, when a friendly Yervain model within three inches of this model would lose any wounds as a result of an attack made against that model, this model can attempt to intercept the attack. Roll 1d6 and a 2 plus. The model does not lose those wounds, and this unit suffers one mortal wound for each of those wounds. Gets a 4 plus invon save. Good bodyguard. And revered figurehead can go inside any other transport. And then next, the Yin Khan here. A fascinating, crazy model. But it's superbly put together. It's, it's a fascinating model for sure. And it's 280 points. <laughs> Pretty expensive. Probably better than my 400 point Wraith Knight, though, I would imagine. So, power level 14. Movement 8, weapon skill, ballistic skill 2 plus, strength 6, toughness 6, 9 wounds. Wow, leadership, uh, attack 6, leadership 9, 3 up save. Uh, it's equipped with Vilith Tsar, the Sword of Souls, uh, which is strength user, strength 6, save minus 4, d6 damage. Uh, you can reroll the wound roll with this weapon. Strength from death, uh, demonic avatar gets 4 plus in one save. Inevitable death, you can. When you set up this model, it can be set up in waiting rather than the battlefield. Uh, if it is, then when another unit is destroyed, after removing the last model from that unit from play, you can set up this model as close as possible to the previ previous position of that model. More than an inch away from enemy models, this unit cannot charge in a turn in which it was set up in this manner. Of course, it can really turn up in the, the thick of the fighting. Blessings of the Whispering God. When a friendly Yunari unit within 6 of this model would lose a wound, roll 1d6, and all 6 the wound is not lost. All three of these characters could... Uh, great bonuses in amongst your army here. Summoned by death when another unit is destroyed. After removing the last model from the unit from play, you can remove this model from the battlefield and can set it up as close as possible to the previous position of that model. More than one inch away from any model, so you can move around the table here a bit as well. Scary. This model cannot charge and turn in which it was set up in this manner. And then the Yinead star stirs. When a Maratus is taken friendly, units within six inches do not roll the dice. It's auto pass. And the avatar of 
uh, you need to here. Uh, when another Eldari model is destroyed within six inches, you can roll 1d6, and a full plus. The model regains one lost wound. There's that ability again. Manifest two, and deny one psychic power. No smite, and two psychic powers from the Revenant Discipline. Oh. Yanari Stratagems. So run through this. A taste for death. Use the stratagem in the shooting or charge phase. When enemy unit is destroyed as a result of an attack made by a ranged weapon by a Yanari model from your army. To the end of the turn, resolve an attack made by a melee weapon by a model. In this unit's model, add one to the hit roll. Okay, useful. There's only one command point. Plus one to the hit rolls. Whispering Spirits. Use the stratagem in the morale phase before a morale test is taken for an enemy unit of an inch of any Yanari units from your army. To the end of that phase, subtract two for the enemy unit's leadership characteristic. Yeesh. Almost two to leadership. Ugh, I don't know about that one. Maybe stacked up with other stuff, but uh, it's quite expensive for that one. Uh, Uniad's net, two command points. Use your strategy at the start of your charge phase. Select an Ari bike unit from your army. This unit can charge, even if it advanced. Useful. Uh, very useful. Uh, that one, United in death. Yeah, two command points. Use a strat stratagem at the start of the fight phase. Select one reborn Assyriani, one reborn Harlequins, one reborn Drakari unit from your army. At the end of that phase, add one attack characteristic of models in those units whilst they're drawing strength from death. It's crazy. Inevitable fate, two command points. Use a stratagem at the start of the fight phase. Select one enemy unit. To the end of that phase, when resolving an attack made by a melee weapon by a Nara unit from your army against that unit, you can reroll the wound roll. Yep, useful rewarding wounds, great. Acolyte of Yuniet, yeah. One command point. Use the strategy before Yanari psychic model for your attempts to manifest a psychic power from the Revenant discipline. Add three to the total for that psychic test. If enemy enemy units have destroyed this phase. Yeah, plus three. Useful for sure. Reborn together. Use the strategy at the start of the morale phase until the end of that phase. Add two to the leadership characteristic Yanari units. From your army, whilst having six inches of any other friendly in our units. Okay, and Shrine of the Whispering God. Use a stratagem before the battle. Select up to three Yanari Inca units from your army. Those units gain strength from death ability. Ah, oh, so you can transfer it onto them. That's cheap to do it as well. Cool. Yep. Artifacts of Death. One command point, use a strategy before the battle. Your army can have one additional relic of Uniad. All the relics in your army includes must be different and be given to different models. Webway ambush, one or three command points, use a strategy during deployment. I uh, just let you deep strike in. Usual rules. Exalted of Uniad here, use one command point, use a strategy before the battle. After nominating your warlord, select one Unari character model from your army that's not your warlord and generate one warlord trait for it. It is regarded as your warlord for the purposes of that warlord trait. Each wall of trait in your army must be unique. You've randomly generated all your duplicates. You can use the stratagem once per battle. Uh, back from the brink, two command points. Use the stratagem in any phase when your infantry character, your Nari biker character model from your army is destroyed. Roll 1d6 on a 4 plus, return that model to play with d3 wounds remaining, placing it as close as possible to its previous position on one inch away from enemy models. This stratagem cannot be used on the same model more than once per battle. Okay, a chance to bring a character back. It's all very useful here. The Great Enemy. Use the stratagem in the fight phase when you know a unit from your army is chosen to fight with. Till the end of that phase, resolve an attack made by model in that unit against a slash unit. You reroll the wind roll. Fire and fade. That's just the usual rules for that one. You can shoot and then immediately move seven inches. But you can't advance. Part of the move, and you can't charge. You have useful things like dark reapers or bikers and so on with shooting weapons. Deadly misdirection two command points. Use a strategy movement phase when our unit from army falls back. The unit can still shoot and charge. Okay, so Elder already have a similar ability. Um, in their codex, souls of the strongest. One command point. Use a strategy in any phase when your opponent's warlord is destroyed. To the end of the battle, unit strong of the strength strength from death ability draws strength from death even if unit has not been destroyed 
in a turn. Wow. And then lightning fast reactions, same as the Eldar. Uh, it's two command points, and it's minus one to the hit rolls in that phase. Either for shooting, or you can use it in close combat as well. Okay, so there's almost at the Revenant Discipline here. Just the Warlord traits then uh, you can use here. Yvrain has Warden of Souls, the Vizarch has Master of Death, and the Incarn has the Fear of the Grave. So Lord of Rebirth here, the first one. At the start of the first battle round, this Warlord regains up to one lost wound. Nice. When this model would lose a wound, on a 5 plus, its wound is not lost. Yeah, pretty good though. Warden of Souls, which is say uh, the Rain's Warlord trait here. Uh, whilst it's drawing strength from death, have one to attacks and strength characteristic. The Walker of Many Paths is the third one here. Once per turn, resolve an attack made by this Warlord. You can reroll one hit roll, one rune roll. Whilst this Warlord is on the battlefield, you can roll one d6 for each command point. You spend to use a stratagem on a 5 plus, it's refunded. You can only regain one command point per battle round by this Warlord trait. Fear of the Grave next, which is the Incarn's trait. Minus one to the leisure catcher, scanning models whilst the unit is doing six inches of this Warlord. Subtract so two, instead of the enemy units have been destroyed as a result of an attack made by the Warlord this turn. Uh, number five, favoured of Yunad here, when this model piles in and consolidates at six inches instead of three. And then Master of Death, which is the Visarch's power, result of an attack made by a melee weapon from this Warlord. A modified hit roll of six scores an additional hit. Okay, and then next is the Revenant Discipline. Let's see what kind of powers you get here. Gaze of Vineyard here. So all charge value of 6. If Manifest is select one, enemy unit whilst it is within 18 inches invisible to the Psyker. Roll 1d6 on a 1, the unit suffers a mortal wound. 2 to 5, it's d3. And on a 6, the unit suffers d6 mortal wounds. Yep, an enemy unit within 18 could be a character, so pretty good for sniping out characters. Bit of an advantage over Smite with that one. And the potential to... Uh, well, Smite's similar, isn't it? To cause more damage if you roll high enough. This one is a dice roll after it's been manifested. Storm of Whispers. Support charge value of 6. If manifested, roll 3d6 for each enemy unit within 6 inches of the Psyker. For each roll of a 6, it's a mortal wound. So you find yourself surrounded. It's okay, but you need sixes though. Word of the Phoenix is a walk charge value of five. If manifested, select one friendly and infantry or biker unit of an 18. If the unit contains a model that has lost any wounds, that model regains up to D3 lost wounds. Otherwise, if any models unit have been destroyed, it's a four plus, you can restore the model with one wound remaining. Place it in unit coherency and so on. Nice. Add unbind souls. Uh, as a walk charge value of six, if manifested, select one enemy unit of an 18. Of this Psyker until the start of the next Psychic phase, resolve an attack made by a melee weapon by a friendly Yunari model against the enemy unit. You can reroll the wound roll. And Shield of Yunad has a warp charge value of 7. If manifested to the start of the next Psychic phase, friendly Yunari units have a 5 plus in one save, whilst they're in 6 inches of the Psyker. It's okay. And, and then finally, Ancestor's Grace has a warp charge value of 5. If manifested, select one friendly Yunari unit within 18 inches of this Psyker to the start of the next Psychic phase. Resolve an attack made by model in this unit. Reroll hit rolls of one, which is okay. Uh, they give you relics here as well. So, I, they, this is, um, if Yanari, I, I, I take it from this. I could be completely wrong on this. I take it they're not going to get their own codex. Then this is this is covered. This plus extra stuff for the Drakari and the craft worlds as well. It means this game is actually not going to have to produce a separate codex. You just go to this campaign book to get all of your up-to-date rules and points and stratagems and so on. I believe that's the way it's going to work for the Inari. Yeah, because like, they've covered everything here. Relics. So the Hungering Blade. Not equipped to a power sword, star glaive, or husk blade only. This relic replaces the power sword, or oh, whatever the weapon was. Uh, it is uh, plus three strength, eight for minus three, and two damage. Really good stat line. Resolve an attack made by this weapon. A modified wound roll of six inflicts a mortal wound in addition to any other damage. It's a, a decent weapon, that one, the hungering blade. God, it's really good. Uh, the Song of Yuniad here. 
Uh, it replaces the shuriken pistol, becomes range 18. Still remains pistol, pistol three. God, I think it's the longest range pistol I've ever seen. In 40k, range 18. Strength five, AP minus one, one damage. Resolve an attack made by this weapon, wound roll of a six plus. This weapon has no penetration characteristic of AP minus three for the attack. Any, if any, any models, if any models in the unit are destroyed as a result of an attack made by this weapon in a turn, subtract one of the leadership characteristic of the unit until the end of that turn. Uh, mirror gaze, uh, resolve an attack made against a model with this relic, it's minus one to hit roll. Soul snare, once per game, when a model with this relic is chosen to shoot with in your shooting phase, that model can throw the soul snare instead of shooting with it with any ranged weapons it is equipped with. Select one enemy within six, invisible to the model. Roll a dice. Two to five, it's D3 mortal wounds. And that model regains up to a number of wounds equal to the number of wounds lost by the unit. Uh, on a six, it's D6 mortal wounds. And that model regains any lost wounds. Pretty good. Pretty satisfying to do that, to shrivel up one of the opponent's characters and then take all the wounds and restore the, <laughs> the wounds back onto your model. Pretty good one, that one. Soul Snare, good fun. Um, six inch range, I got it close. Lost Shroud, resolve an attack made by a model with this relic. Half any damage inflicted rounding up. In order this relic would lose a wound or d6 and a five plus the wound is not lost. That is very, very powerful, very, very helpful for toughening up a, a model armed with that one. It's a very powerful stratagem set. And Korag High's Locket. When an enemy unit is destroyed as a result of an attack made by a model with this relic, add one to the model's move. The attack is characteristic. There's tactical objectives here for Yunari as well. Uh, so people ask me to cover these. So uh, Spirit Sanctuary. And this tactical objective is generated. Roll 1d6. Score 1 victory point if no enemy units are controlling the objective arc corresponding to the result rolled at the end of this turn. So very straightforward. Uh, number 12. Harness the Spirits. Score 1 victory point if at least one Yunari model from your army successfully manifested a psychic power for the Revenant Discipline this turn. Very easy, that one as well. Uh, Fini adds glory. Score one victory point if three or more units were destroyed during this turn. The result in attacks made by Yunari units from your army. Yeah, doable as well. Pretty good. Quite long points, though. But quite easy to accomplish. So, pretty steady here. 14 is surety of surety of purpose. Score D3 victory points if you have achieved at least two other tactical objectives this turn. Right, so you can stack them up and get that as a bonus. So these are all pretty... Very doable here. 15 deaths every visage. Score one victory point if at least one enemy unit was destroyed by in either the psychic shooting or fight phase this turn as a result of a psychic power manifested or an attack made by a Yunari model from your army. Score D3 victory points if at least one enemy unit was destroyed in all three phases, which is quite doable actually. And then Soul Surge. Score one victory point if three or more models were destroyed during this turn as a result of attacks made by Yunari units from only whilst those Yunari units were drawing strength from death. Okay. Oh, and there's a bit of story at the back. Hmm. Not seen that before. And there you go. And that's the end. A bit of a, a creak as the, the book closes here. Hope and despair entwine here. The Aldari race are in decline, but uh, they'll not be wiped out for a good while. <laughs> Some really good powers inside this book. So yeah, I'll be I'll be referencing this one for sure. Uh, even just to get a hold of the book and just uh, take some of the bonuses, and just improve your craft world army or your Drakari army and so on. Uh, but there's some very potent stuff in here. You'd be um, it would be silly just to skip this one as an Eldar player because there's some great enhancements here. Even if you're not going to get any new models and so on, or even change your list, you can start enhancing your Exarch powers and so on uh, just by taking some very tasty options available here from this book. So thanks to Games Workshop for sending me a copy of, through ahead of time. Uh, and, and then check out gamingfigures.com. They do Games Workshop at a discounted rate. But that's the full review here, giving you all the details, all the stats and rules. Uh, that's the approach I take with these Codex reviews, just to give you the full uh, lowdown on what's going on in these publications as they come out. Keep a look out for more reviews on the channel. Thanks for watching and tune in next time.